Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to upgrade this older Dell Optiplex 760 from Windows 7 to Windows 10 for free. You can use this method on pretty much any computer that is 2010 or newer. The areas that will be covered in this video are configuring your BIOS settings to be able to boot from USB, backing up your user data, getting a copy of your licensing information, creating a bootable USB drive with Windows 10 on it, installing and activating Windows 10, and restoring your user data to the new Windows 10 system. I will be using the clean install method, which means I will overwrite the existing system drive with the new Windows 10 operating system using a Microsoft factory operating system image. As a professional IT engineer, I always recommend doing clean installs of operating systems rather than upgrades. Doing it the clean install way results in a perfectly clean, fast, and stable system with no junk data, no malware, or previous user settings, and it will run like a brand new computer fresh out of the box. In this example, I'm using this 2008 era Dell Optiplex 760. By installing new software on your older hardware, you can save a lot of money and still have a highly functional system which is perfectly capable of everyday office work and standard multitasking. If you are taking the time to install a new operating system like this, I highly recommend you upgrade to at least 8 gigabytes of RAM and install a solid state drive while you're doing it. Doing these things combined with a perfectly clean operating system image will result in a smooth, fast, and stable system ready to use for years to come. So let's get to it. First, we're going to configure the BIOS settings to be able to boot from USB. Power off the system. Power it back on and start hitting the F12 key immediately. Then select System Setup to go into the BIOS settings. In the BIOS, the main thing you want to make sure of is that your USB ports are enabled. And you can do that under System Configuration, Miscellaneous Devices. And here you can see that on this system, all of the USB ports are enabled. You do not have to add USB device to the boot sequence. Once you've ensured that the USB ports are enabled, you can exit the BIOS and boot back into the operating system. Now we're going to back up your user data. You can use any external medium to back up your data, but I prefer to use these external hard drives. You can get Western Digital, Seagate, there are a bunch of brands. This particular one's a two terabyte USB 3.0. So I'm gonna plug that into the system. Now we wanna get a copy of the user data because we are going to overwrite the existing system drive, which means if you do not back up your data, all the data will be overwritten when the new Windows 10 operating system is installed on the system drive. For most users, all of their user data is typically under their Windows user profile, which is located under computer, local disk C, users, and in this case, my username is example user. I'm just going to grab a copy of all this. All of this data is considered the Windows user profile. Copy that. Then I'm going to go to the backup drive and paste that data there. If you have a lot of user data, it may take a while for the data to be copied to the external hard drive. The areas that are most commonly used by users are my documents, where I put some example data in there, music, I don't have anything in there now, my pictures, I downloaded some sample images, downloads, desktop, those are typically the areas that I see users having their data. Data can certainly exist in any location on a hard disk or a network, such as a server. But 
in most cases your user data is going to be under your Windows user profile on the local system. Once you have your data backed up, we're going to grab a copy of the licensing information for the computer as well. We can do this by going to the LARC Advisor. Downloading the Belark Advisor. This actually doesn't even have to be real user information. Now we get the download. We didn't have to verify anything in email and we can download the advisor. This is a software that gives you a bunch of information about your system. In this case, we're interested in the license information so that we can reapply the licenses in the new system when Windows 10 is running on it. We install this. We do not need to check for security definitions because we're interested in licensing information. We can skip the checking of the local network as well. Now it's going to generate a report and one of the options in the report is software licenses. The biggest one we want here is the Windows license so that we can use that same license to activate Windows 10. But in this case I also have Office 2007 installed so it would be handy to grab that license. What I like to do is just grab a copy of all the software licensing copy it, go to the external drive where we're storing our data temporarily, create a text document, license info is what I like to name them, and then just paste that in there. Make sure to save. Now we have the user data backed up and the licensing information backed up. The next step is to create a bootable USB drive with Windows 10 on it. We can do that by just Google searching Windows 10 download. And we want to get this from Microsoft. Whenever you're downloading software, you don't want to get it from third party locations if possible. If you can get it directly from the manufacturer, that's where you should always go. In this case, we're getting Windows 10 factory image directly from Microsoft, and then we're gonna clean install it on this system drive, which will overwrite the existing operating system, and it will be a perfectly clean computer that will run like brand new. We're gonna download Windows 10, and we're gonna use the installation media creation tool. At this point, you're going to need a thumb drive that you can use to write the installation media onto, and then we're going to use this to install Windows 10. Run the media creation tool, and you can insert the USB drive now. Accept this. When the media creation tool is creating the bootable USB drive, it can take a while because it's downloading a copy of the operating system image and then writing it to the USB drive in a way that's bootable. So if it's taking a while, that's okay. Just let it run. And we don't want to do an upgrade. We want to do a clean install. So we're creating our installation media. And in this case, it detected the right specs that we want. We want Windows 10 64-bit. As far as additions of the operating system, the license key that you use is going to determine which version of the operating system gets unlocked. And in this case, we want to create a USB flash drive. We want to make sure to choose the USB flash drive and not the backup disk. 
Now the media creation tool is downloading a copy of Windows 10 and writing it onto the USB disk so that it's bootable. Here we can see that the installation media is being written to the USB drive. While this is finishing up, we want to make sure that we have written down or printed the license key that we backed up. License info, we want to have this key written somewhere the Windows 7 Professional. We'll use this to activate Windows 10 Professional as well. All right, now the bootable media flash drive is ready. We can finish this. At this point, we're gonna shut it down and overwrite the system drive. So this is your last chance to make sure that you have all the data off of this drive that you want to keep. I'm going to shut it down. When the system is fully powered off, unplug the external hard drive that you saved your user data and license info to, and you can leave the USB drive with Windows 10 on it installed still. Turn it on and hit the F12 key to get the BIOS boot menu. Now we're going to choose the USB device that we just created with Windows 10 installation media on it. Now it's loading the Windows 10 setup. Choose next, install now. Here's where we enter the key that we got off the computer using the Belark advisor. Hit next. accept the license terms choose the custom option delete the existing partitions so it looks like this this is your system disk and nothing else it will create its own partitions that are necessary hit next now the installation media on the USB drive is being written to the system drive. Once again, you can see the USB drive is in use. This time it's being read from instead of written to. Now the system is restarting and it's going to run Windows from the system drive instead of the USB drive. The installation is complete. We'll go through the final setup and restore the data that we backed up. Select your region. keyboard layout. We do not need a second keyboard. We're going to set up for personal use. We're going to do an offline account. Choose the limited experience. We'll use the same username. Example user And type in a password I always recommend password protecting your computers some people think it's not convenient to enter a password but it's the most basic level of protection that you have on your system and you should always use a password and you should always use complex passwords as well do some security questions. I'm just gonna put Mike for all of them. Personally, I like to turn this stuff off. I don't want my location being shared regularly. I don't wanna send diagnostic data. I don't want tailored experiences. I don't want find my device. This is a computer that stays in the house. The probability of it being lost is very low. I don't want to send additional diagnostic data and I definitely don't want to be advertised to on my own personal computer. I always turn all these off and I personally don't use Cortana. Okay, now we have Windows 10. Here are the exact system details for this particular computer.
we have Microsoft Windows 10 Pro running on an Optiplex 760, which is a 2008 era Dell Optiplex. I upgraded this one with a Q6600 quad core, but the E8500s that were shipped with these, it was either E84, E85, or E8600 dual core processors work absolutely fine as well. This one has also been upgraded from 4 gigs of RAM that it was originally shipped with to 8 gigs of RAM. And I have a crucial MX series SSD in this one as well. So this is actually a highly functional computer for everyday use and multitasking. It would fall short for extensive applications like gaming or video editing or other processor intensive or video intensive tasks. But for everyday office computing and everyday workflow, this is more than enough power to be able to do that seamlessly and perfectly smooth and fast. Now we can plug in the external USB drive that we backed up our data to. And the way I like to do it is to open the C drive by going to File Explorer, This PC, Local Disk, C, Users, Example User. and then put this on the left side. And then open up another file explorer window, move it over to the right, and go to the backup drive that has the data that we want to restore to the new system on it. So now these things line up and we can just put the data in the right locations. On the desktop, on the original one, we had these, copy those, go into desktop, on the new operating system, paste them in. Go to documents on the old one, copy those, go to documents on the new one, paste them in. I didn't have any of this other stuff except I did put some sample pictures in there. Let's grab those. And again, if you transferred large amounts of user data to the backup drive, it will take longer to transfer it over. Uh, data transfer can actually take quite a while if you're talking about a couple hundred gigs or terabytes of data. In this case, there was a very small amount of data, so it was very quick. And it's in the same location that it used to be on the Windows 7 computer because we manually put it in the exact same location. If we go to File Explorer, go to My Documents, here we have the exact same data that we had on the Windows 7 system, but we have it on the Windows 10 system and there's no junk data, there's no residual files from it being upgraded, there are no bugs, it will run perfectly clean and smooth because we overwrote the existing system drive instead of upgraded it. Thank you for watching, I hope this was helpful. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more how-to videos coming soon, including upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11 using the clean install method as well.